Hi and welcome to On Two Wheels. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of checking and adjusting valve clearance on a DRZ400. Stay tuned. So over time, the valve clearance on a bike can easily go off. And the first symptom of this is difficulty in a cold start. So you'll be cranking your engine quite a few times before it actually fires up. So rather than strain your starter motor over and over again, you could always do a quick clearance check on the bike. So this is a 15, 20 minute process and uh, it could save you a lot of trouble. So I start by taking the tank off the bike. The tank is held on with two bolts that go on the sides, a rubber tab that sits just below the seat, and you also need to unclamp the fuel hose. After I got the tank off, I noticed that there was a slight moist patch of oil around the head gasket and the base gasket. So this could be due to a bad gasket or it could just be that the head bolts haven't been tightened properly. So while I'm at it, I might as well check for that. Before the valve cover comes off, I need to unplug the wire going to the spark plug as well as the oil breather hose that sits on top of the valve cover. With these two off, I can now take the valve cover off. The valve cover is held with three Allen key bolts, which are quite prominently visible. So with the valve cover off, I can see that the timing chain and the camshafts are exposed. I do a quick check to see if there's anything that shouldn't be there like metal filings or anything. There's nothing of that sort. So I can now proceed to the next step. Because I also plan to resolve the oil leak on the head gasket and the base gasket, I'm just going to make sure that this oil leak isn't because of a loose head bolt. To get to the left front head bolt, I need to remove the blank out which covers the hole that is used for the decompression lever. So the decompression lever is something that you would have if your bike has a kickstart. Now before I go any further, I'm going to make sure that the engine is at top dead center. First I need to take off the little cover on the engine side. So this will expose a 17mm nut which I can use to rotate the engine manually. And how do I know that the engine hits top dead center? When I look through the little inspection hole on top of the case, engine case, I will see the generator rotate and there will be a little line marking the top dead center with a T right next to it. And just to make sure that everything else is in top dead center as well, especially the camshaft, I go around and take a look at the cams. The cam should be pointing at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock and if you look at the cams individually, intake cam should have number 3 pointing towards the top and the exhaust cam should have number 2 pointing towards the top. So I now grab a feeler gauge and check the valve clearance. So there are some numbers you need to remember. The clearance on the intake cam should be between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters. I need to check the clearance on both these valves. I then check the exhaust valves. So the clearance on the exhaust valves should be between 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters. So it looks like both my cams and all four of my valves are within the tolerance limits. So I don't need to do any adjustments. So 
So let's take a scenario where my valve clearance is outside the uh, specified tolerance. How do I fix this? First I check the actual clearance that I do have. So let's assume that I have 0.4 millimeters when I should be having 0.3. So which means I need to close the gap by 0.1 millimeters. So to clear this gap, I need to add a shim under the valve bucket, which is slightly larger. So I'm now confident that my valve clearance is accurate. I can now go on to fix the oil leak that I saw at the head gasket and base gasket. So the first thing I should do is make sure that the head bolts are actually tightened as per spec. So if these bolts are loose, there's a high chance that oil could leak out of the gasket. So to reach the head bolts, I need to take the camshafts off. So I first undo the ca caps on the camshaft. Now, because I'm going to be taking the engine cams off to tighten the head bolts, I need to make sure that the cam chain tensioner is also removed. So the cam chain tensioner essentially makes sure that the cam chain stays nice and tight. And as long as the cam chain tensioner is applying pressure on the chain, the cams will not be moving. So you need to make sure that the tensioner comes out before the cam shafts are loosened. So here's a little trick that you could do. Instead of removing the cam completely and risking losing timing, what I will do is essentially move the camshaft aside while keeping the chain on the gear. So this will make sure that when I put the cam back in position, the timing will remain unchanged. Once this is off, I can now see the head bolt and I'm going to tighten it. In this case, I noticed that it was significantly loose. I then repeat this for all four head bolts. Once I'm confident that the head bolts are tightened to spec, I'm going to put the camshafts back in their position. I then put the camshaft caps back on and tighten them to spec. And once the camshafts are fitted, I just rotate the engine manually to make sure that timing is still intact. I then fit the valve cover back onto the engine. I also cover the blank out for the decompression valve. I then fit the cover on the side of the engine case. And after making sure the valve cover is on, I'm going to make close the inspection window. I also make sure that the breather hose is connected. And lastly, I fit the spark plug wire. So next I take the bike out and give it a quick start to make sure things are all okay. So that sums up the process of how you do a valve clearance check on a DRZ400. Let me know what you think and if you found this useful. Also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to On Two Wheels. Thank you for watching. See ya.